Okay. Couple housekeeping issues to start with. First of all, when you come into this call, I do get a yeah. tenant tracking of you being in the call and you not being in the call. Um, it does give me email or whatever you have there to show me you're here. Um, so I, I get that on a daily basis, and that and your discussion boards is what I base attendance on. So please, if you can't make a conference, just email me later and say that you weren't able to make it and that you viewed the video when I post the link. It takes a little bit for me to get the link. But hey, Chris, I definitely... my, uh, this is Mike. Uh, my my uh, school email doesn't work. Um, doesn't work coming I, I, into this, this or just doesn't work overall? Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, my, it's try, it says I have to reset my password. I try to reset my password. <laughs> but I don't let it. Okay. Can you do me a favor later today? Can you um, email me from a email address that works? And I will go in and reset that. I have rights to go do that. I'll go reset it to something and send it to you. Thank you. Okay. And that goes for anybody else. If you guys are having problems with school email addresses, I have rights to go reset those. Just send it to me. Send me you're having a problem, what your email address should be, and I can go reset those passwords. Um, and if the list is too long, I'll um, give it to our IT department to go reset. But I can do the ones and twos. So, Okay. We have a couple things that I do need to go over today. Um, first of all, in the announcements of the course, let me share my screen real quick. In the course announcements, which is up here on the left top of the course, um, I put, there were two announcements in there that I put. I put today's list of things that need to be accomplished, but I also put the next course up here. Um, as you know, this course actually ends on the on Monday, and as I said yesterday, I'm going to be entering an incomplete, um, basically just because um, we can't do the shop stuff. So that will catch up when you come back on campus. But I put the announcement up there. Please let me know you're in the course when you get in that course. Okay, there's an announcement at the top that you can actually respond to. I also need you to tell me if you have this book or not, the print reading for construction. My guess is most of you don't have it, but I need to know if anybody does have it. So by replying to this, you're doing two things. You're letting me know you made it into the course, which is important, and you're letting me know that you don't have the print reading book. I'm working on this situation right now. And I'll have more direction probably later today. So I'll probably be putting a post up there either later today or first thing Monday morning. But any questions from anybody on that? The hyperlink, the hyperlink isn't working on mine. Uh, it so you, didn't can just work? Copy, you can just copy and paste it into the um, search bar on Google. Uh, <clears throat> I'll check I did that, that later, but I do know that some Yeah, I, I use work. the app too, though. So. Well, so do I. But as soon as, if you go, if you copy and paste the, the URL into a group, like Google or Safari or whatever, it'll pop up, it'll enroll you, and then, it, like, you, you refresh your, your Canvas app, and it'll be there. As long, but you have to log in on the um, the website or whatever, okay? Let's yeah. If I can, let's... While I have you on the phone, let me see real quick if I can fix that situation. <clears throat> okay. That should probably work on that course. Let me take care of that in the other section real quick. I don't think a lot, a lot of people in this conference, a lot of people didn't make it into the conference call yesterday. Yeah, I, I think that too, and and as I said, that's why I'm going to start recording these, um, because as we go into Monday, as we go like into Tuesday, this is going to become much more important um, because of the fact we are starting a new course that is a 100% paper paper based course. Okay, those links should now work. Sorry about that. Um, you should now be able to click on it. Those of you who copied and pasted, nice job. 
um, it, it actually works that way as well, but you should be able to click on it now. Yeah, it's okay. working now. So, again, just make sure you post in the, in the discussion board, reply to my announcement, and let me know you're in the course. Okay, I want to talk about some schematics today. Um, can you guys see my screen? No, I'm on the phone. Yeah, okay. I'm only on the Yeah, I'll see it. Okay. Um, for those of you who are only on phones, um, you may want to – I hope I can – I hope this somewhat makes sense what I'm going to talk about because I wanted to talk about these schematics a little bit today. What the hell? Um, for those of you who are on a phone – I hope you can follow along. Um, for those of you who are connected on your iPad, are you able to see this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, this was the schematic labeled 1C. And the only reason I'm going back and taking a look at this schematic is because um, there was a lot of confusion about it I saw when it was being submitted. I know um, both instructors had you guys submit this, and I saw a lot of lower grades on the schematic, so I really wanted to talk about this one. What can anybody tell me about this schematic? What type of defrost timer is this? It says cumulative, but we, we were thinking that was more a continuous one. Well, but is it, is it commercial or is it domestic? Let's start with that. Uh, domestic. Okay. It's domestic, and the reason is just because there isn't a lot of pins here, and you always can tell it's domestic if you have just one normally open and one normally closed. Okay. Now, Cumulative versus continuous all depends on how you wire it, okay? We know pin 3 is going to go to L2 no matter what, okay? Pin 3, and I'll try to get this as neat as I can possibly get it, pin 3 is going to go to L2, okay? That's or neutral, depending on how, depending on the type of system it is, okay? Pin one is what's going to make the difference between continuous or cumulative. By cumulative, we mean if the compressor is running, our defrost timer is running. If the compressor is not running, our defrost timer is not running, okay? So if I came... And I'm just going to come around here. This is difficult to do sometimes. Let's do that. If I came and came directly down and wired it this way, is that defrost clock always running or is that defrost clock running only when the compressor is running. It should always be running always at this running. point. Okay. Now, if I change this wiring a little bit. Go to thermostat to one. And go No one to here. thermostat. Is that defrost timer running only when the compressor running or always running? It depends on how you hook it up from that point well, on. Always but... when the compressor is running. Yeah, it's only when the compressor's running because compressor's mm -hmm. controlled by the thermostat. So I know you're probably aware of this, but listening to this on a phone call is not working out so well. Yeah. Um, guys, I don't know what to say for those who are just on the phone. i I got to go through these schematics. Um, <clears throat> I understand, and I wanted to go through them too, but this is useless to me at the moment. You can, you come in on, can you come in yeah. on your iPad or no? I can probably try, but I haven't downloaded this app yet or even looked for it. Uh, 
I'm okay if you want to drop off and watch the videos, but or watch the recording of this. But again, I, I really, I said on yesterday's call I was going to do schematics, so I, I really wanted to do these. No, I understand. That makes sense. That was the only thing I really needed to go over too. I just wasn't sure how it was going to work out doing it over a conference. But um, I suppose if you're going to upload all this as a video, screen, um, it would. Make I am going to upload. I, as I said, I am recording this and I am going to upload the video, um, or at least put the link in. Okay. You said on Monday we're transferring to a different app now as well. Well, if this one is working, we can stay here. Okay. I can't use Skype. The other option would be Zoom, and I'm having a problem with Zoom because you can't dial into it on the phone, and I really don't want to lose that capability for people who can't connect really with their iPads easily. Um, yeah, that was I, nice. What? I download, I'll download both of the applications if need be. That way, whatever we end up on, I won't have okay. this issue again. I, Let's see how it goes with this today, because right now the sound quality and stuff I think is pretty good for you guys. So uh, I prefer to stay on this. It makes it much easier. Yeah, that's fine. I just I'm gonna have to go ahead and download the application for the iPad or whatever. Yeah, it's, to do it's to called see. free conference call, and it's <coughs> it store to free download. All right, I'll check it out. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to upload this. If you do want to drop off, I'm fine with that. Or if you want to hang out just to hear some of the questions and answers going on, I'm fine with that too. All right, sounds good. Hey John, hey John, I put the app in the uh, in our chat. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm going to look into that and see if I can get on that one. It'll make it easier. Okay. So I'm going to a little bit continue here, and again, I will upload this recording, but I hope you can find, I hope you can install that app. Um, from this time clock, where does the defrost heater come off? Anybody? Uh, defrost comes off of the uh, leg two. Off of, of the defrost the timer. Pin two, right? Yes, <clears throat> So I'm going to come basically from the defrost heater to pin two. Now, why do I have to have this thermostat after the defrost heater? So it only runs while the compressor while the compressor is running. Um, no, because the defrost Wait. heater is not going to run while the compressor is so running. So when it when it heat up, is is you know stop to heat. That's exactly correct. It's a high, this is called a high limit switch. Okay. When the, it, any time you have an electric heat strip, it is code that you have to have a high limit cutout. Any time there's any electric heat, you have to have a high limit cutout to cut it out in case it continues to run and overheats, it could cause a fire. So we have to, we have to put that in, okay? And then this just comes back. Okay, and I'll change the color of this in a sec. That comes back to L2. I'll just tie all my L2s together. <clears throat> okay, now, what device is this down here? The, the, bo the square box with two M, S, and one in it. Isn't that a... Uh potential uh, relay? Current relay. Oh, current current relay. Cur yeah, it's a current coil relay. The reason we can say it's a current coil relay is because it has this M terminal. Okay, this is the only load you will ever put in series with a compressor. Okay, we never put anything else in series with a compressor except for this current coil relay. Um, I know the guys in Brad's class. I went over this a little bit with you when I was with you. Where does M go? Anybody, where does M go to? Where does M, M go? goes to the the um the run winding. part of the compressor. The run winding. The run winding, right? Yes. Yes. 
Okay, so, and again, let me change color because that's Good line. Morning. Where does S go to? The um, to start winding. Now, before we forget about this, what's this <clears throat> capacitor over here? That's the start capacitor. Okay, so we want that capacitor to go, in this case, between my one terminal two. 2 and my terminal 1 because the start capacitor has to come out of the circuit once mm -hmm. the motor starts running. Right. <clears throat> now, what's this device over here to the right of the compressor? It is your overload. The overload. Yeah, your overload. Okay, so my overload is going to wire to common. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. and I'm going to change the color of that wire because, again, it's on the line two side. Out of the overload, we're just going to come to line two. Might as well tie in the condenser fan while I'm there so I don't forget right. about him. Okay, I can then come down out of my normally closed again and tie in pin, I want to tie in pin two, and I'll change the color of that in a sec. Why would you do that? Why did I do that? Yes. Because this line powers the compressor. Okay. okay. It's. I'm just using it as a junction point. Does it okay. matter if I put it here or here? Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, it doesn't. It's just a, it's just a wire. Right. Okay, now, what do I want to do in this case with the evaporator fan? Do I want my evaporator fan to be running con continuously, or do I want to turn it on and off with the compressor? So I would turn it on and off with the compressor because you have the defrost heater. That's correct. I cannot run an evaporator fan in when the defrost is running, because if I do, I'm going to blow all that humidity throughout the freezers. Okay, so the so the um, evaporator has to shut off. Okay, with the um, with the when the defrost is on, I have to shut that evaporator off. And again, if you look on where I'm putting this, it's just a junction point. Okay. Remember, I have to have line voltage coming down all the way through here, and I can junction there and come to my evaporator fan. Okay, then I can come over on the neutral side or line two side, and I can just extend this down. Let me change that color real quick. Make sense? Yes. So the line between the um, relay point two to the condenser, we have to be there or is just I I have some background noise there. Would you repeat that question for me, please? Yeah, the the line between the and the relay, the point number two to the condenser, that line that that you that joint over there have to be there or. Just to, you know, put it there. If you you could put it here, or you could put it here. Hey Chris, I'm getting a lot of background noise from your direction. So we without that, the condenser is not going to work. Yeah, if I if I just had that not connected to anything, I'm not bringing line down to this portion at all. Okay, there's no connection to okay. L. You see it? If I put that there, I now have connection to to the line. You okay? Yes. Okay. Now, what do I need to change? to make this a continuous run timer? Um, you have to put the thermostat uh, just so it would be the operator control for the compressor only. So right. if, I, if I adjusted, if I took out that line, right. 
moved that. I'm trying to do this somewhat neatly. There. Right. Okay, and basically let me just I'm just gonna throw that green so you can see the wire crossing. Does this make it now a continuous run? Uh, it should be, yes. Yeah. So that's your difference between your continuous run and your cumulative run. Okay, it's just based on based on where where these two wires, where we're feeding power and where we're feeding um, the thermostat from. But the key with defrost is always turn off the evaporator fan. Whenever you go in defrost, turn off the evaporator fan. And again, we're coming back to when you look at your compressor. And I know I, I talked about this in shop the week I was down there with you guys. You take your three readings, okay, with your own meter, and the pin across from your highest reading. In this case, we have a 15, we have a 9, and we have a 6. The pin across from the highest reading, okay, is always my common. Then from common to my next highest reading is my start, and from common to my lowest reading is my run. You can always add the start and the run together, and you get your, um, you get your highest reading. So that's how you can tell compressor readings. Make sense? Hey guys, am I cutting out on this? No. Okay. Is that a start capacitor down there? The one on the left hand side right here? Yes. Yes, because it cuts out once this current coil opens here. It takes the start capacitor out of the circuit and takes the start winding out of the circuit. So yes, it is. Okay, it's confusing me a little bit because it's a normally open contact there. Because I thought they're usually normally closed for a start capacitor. Yeah, I don't know. Well, not really, because in the current coil relay, okay, in this type, it could be either way. This could be a normally open or a normally closed. In this case, this gets energized, okay, when the amperage, you, you guys remember that as a motor starts, the amperage is a lot higher, right? Mm -hmm. So this relay coil picks up on that higher amperage and closes this. Okay. Okay, and as the amperage comes down, this coil does not create any magnetic field, and this will reopen. Okay, I got you. Thank you. Now, there are, start, there are current coil relays where that works exactly in opposite. But in this case, OE, and... The way you can actually tell is that this one probably does not have an upside on it. It's not gravity driven, just probably. Does anybody else have any questions on this diagram? Okay. I want to talk about the day 12 diagram. I want to talk about the first three phase diagram. Now, three phase does usually not have a neutral, okay? It has an L1, an L2, and an L3. You will see that down here on the motors, okay, down here, there is no run start in common. Something about three-phase motors that's actually pretty important is the resistance of every single one of these windings is equal. So if you go from the top to the middle and get 5 ohms, middle to the bottom and get 5 ohms, and top to bottom and get 5 ohms, that's normal. You do not have a start, run, and a common. You have L1, L2, and L3. 
Okay, so that that right there is a big difference with three three phase. Which one is that one? What, what schematic is that one? This is the twelve, the plain twelve. If you open it, is it's going to say um, day thirty two. Okay, schematic twelve. And when you open it, it's actually going to say day 32 on it. Now, what's this, what, what's this device right here? Uh, what were you pointing at? The one, it's to right to the right of the thermostat. I'm sorry, I didn't see, realize you can't see my mice corner. Let's do this. That's a contact right there. Yes, yeah, a contact. That's my contact. What can you tell me about the coil of this contact? 208 volts. It's, it's yeah. high voltage, yeah. It's the same line voltage as you're coming into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to realize that this thermostat is a line voltage thermostat. What's this device right here? Your overload? Yeah, no, it's that's... actually, it's my motor starter overload situation. Oh. Because what happens if one of these legs, okay, let's say this bottom leg becomes an open circuit. Okay, let's say the winding burns out. What happens to the other two legs? They'll work harder. Yeah. They're going to work a lot harder to the point that these other two legs could melt down and there's a lot of damage. The other thing that happens quite frequently in larger buildings is, let's say my incoming voltage on L3 disappears. So all I'm left with L1 and L2, so suddenly I have a voltage imbalance. We need to sense that this overload has happened, and we need to shut off our circuits, the whole circuit, before the rest of before all the windings melt down. So we have to prevent our um, we have to prevent damage to the compressor. These compressors in large three phase systems could cost up to ten thousand dollars. Holy sh! Okay, Damn. if you're talking a large centrifugal. Um, chiller, and I'll post one of them to the discussion. I'll post a few pictures to the discussion boards. Um, I was on a large centrifugal chiller for an apartment system down an apartment complex down in Miami, and it's a hundred and forty thousand dollar replacement for a compressor. So you have to you have to really realize these things have to be protected. It's not something someone just wants to replace, like a residential compressor might be five hundred dollars. I mean, we're talking large amounts of money. That's why this is so important. What's this control right here? It's your um, oil safety. Control. Yeah. Now here's where it becomes really important to read the labels. Okay. You have a 240 volt connection and a 120 volt connection. Which one of them are you going to use in this circuit? 240. 240, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Read, because yeah. 208, 240 is most yep. of the time interchangeable. We're going to ignore the 120. You connect that someplace, right. you might have a meltdown. Oh, well, that answers my question I had on that one. It's gone, by the way. I'm back. I can see hey. you now. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. Okay. So now, in this case, rather than draw a bunch of lines, I'm going to <clears throat> display a pre-filled one, and then we're going to talk about it, if that makes sense. And I'll make that it available. That works. Okay. So Screenshot that. Bingo. I'll actually make it available. <laughs> Okay. You, I've, I'm going to tell you guys later. I made a whole bunch of stuff available for you guys to download. So, uh, let me pull this up a little bit. It's just as easy as screen share it, though. Okay, so we have our L1, L2, L3. 
okay? We come out of L1, we're going to do two places. And this is where it becomes relatively important, and I'll explain this through. We're coming out of L1, L2, and L3, and we're coming down to our contactor. Okay, so L1, L1, 2, and L3 is coming down to our contactor. Yeah. It is also coming to L. Yep. On to my oil control. L, remember, stands for line. We're coming out of M. And we're coming down to the first normally closed on my um, overload. We're basically putting all of these normally closed in series. So you just loop it through. Zigzag or yep. Like You're looping it through. And the reason is, if any one of these open, does the whole control circuit open? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm looping it through. That is connected to my coil on what we would normally call the common or the L2 or whatever side, okay? Since we don't have a common, we're using L1 as my control circuit, one side of it. L3 gets a feed down here to the thermostat, right? You follow the wires through, L3 comes down to the thermostat. That's my other side of this control circuit. Then L1, L2, L3, T1, T2, T3 feed my compressor through this coil. You see how T2 comes in through the second coil on this overload and goes to the center winding of the compressor. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. So what happens if we have a call for cooling? Okay. By the way, this, this same setup is used in air conditioning as it is in refrigeration. So let's just say call for cooling. Okay. My thermostat closes. Okay. Thermostat closes. And the contactor coil is energized. Energizes. All my contacts close. Oops. Let's just say there's a line through there. All my all my contacts close, right? We energize my compressor. Now, as with all overloads in this shape, there's a little bit of a delay. Okay, it's like uh, it's a very short delay. It's less than 30 second delay. Okay, so I mean, some of these are five seconds, some of these are 10 seconds. It gives enough delay for the motor to start turning and we get rid of our start amperage. Once this motor's turning, these coils are just like this current coil that we had in the last diagram. Okay, it's large wire and it doesn't create a magnetic field unless the amperage goes way up. So these contacts remain closed. Now let's say we lose, okay, let's say we lose this winding. What happens to the amperages of the other two windings? <laughs> Going up. Yeah, those Goes up. Contact should open L1 and L2. Well, on well the yeah, it's gonna. It's actually gonna just shut off this. It's gonna interrupt when this. When one of these goes up, okay, it's gonna open that. Or that, you're right, it's going to open one of those normally closed contacts. And then it's going to de energize that coil, which will open every single one of these and shut off my compressor. So that's how this overload works. Is there any questions on that overload? Okay. Now, 
if I get rid of this, we'll go back to our normally, I'll go back to my normally running position. Okay, let me just put my little... Okay, we're running, right? Everybody, we're, we're now operating, compressors running, everything's going well. All of a sudden, I have an oil pressure problem. Who can tell me what two pressures the oil control runs on? Anybody? It would be the differential between the suction side pressure and the crankcase's oil pressure. The, oil, the oil pump discharge, yes. So we're dealing with what's called net oil pressure. Okay, so if I have net oil pressure, it's my discharge oil pump pressure minus my suction. And that's refrigerant suction line pressure, so that's when you're going to get off your gauge. Okay, because crankcase pressure is the same as suction line pressure. So I saw a few people in the discussion board were talking about head pressure. Okay, head pressure is my high side pressure, not the suction line pressure. So net oil pressure is what we're worried about. So if my net oil pressure falls, okay, we are going to turn around and open that, well, let me just circle that. We're going to turn around and open that normally closed contact right there. Once I open that normally closed contact, okay, because of the way this is wired, that relay coil down there no longer has power and I open L1, L2, and L3 and shuts down my compressor. Now, do oil pressure controls automatically reset or do they manually reset? Oil pressure controls automatically or manually? Automatic. I think it's manual. Automatic. Okay, oil pressure control, I'm sorry, manual. There's manual. a reset button on it, sorry. Okay, manual reset, why? And I think I talked about this when I was down there. Why do we put manual resets on things? Well, you wouldn't want that short cycling on an oil pressure control. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want this to just continually to turn that compressor on and off, especially if there's no oil in the system. Okay, if there's an oil problem, I don't want this to continually to try to bump that compressor over because it could move pretty fast. Okay, and I'll, I'll destroy that compressor. Um, now, if this oil pressure control, if you know you have oil in this system, and if this control keeps shutting off, okay, you have oil, you've checked everything over, you have suction pressure, you have, you have oil in the system, and if the control immediately trips upon restart, what's your problem? That would be the delay that should be built in. Yeah. You're not going to fix that delay. You're just going to repl you're going to take this whole control out. Okay, you're going to take this whole control out, and it's a bad part. You replace that control. Okay, you're not going to go in there replace springs or anything like that. The immediate trip tells you you have an oil pressure control problem. If it runs for 90 seconds and then trips out, or whatever the delay of the control is, then you have a true oil pressure control, or an oil pressure problem. But the immediate trip, you have a bad control. So this oil control valve, would, it um should have an automatic delay in it already? 
Yes, the the oil pressure controls all come shipped with usually a 90 second delay. Some of them are adjustable. <clears throat> is but that there's that enough? There's enough the of a boards, delay. Sorry. Go ahead. On those boards we set up, are those the little blue boxes uh, that we installed on the top right corner? I do not believe you had oil pressure controls on those boards. I think those are just pressure switches. Okay. So or least, I didn't have I didn't have oil pressure controls on the boards. Um, maybe we haven't added no. anything to them. Okay, so yeah, there's now. Do you remember on the that large supermarket system compressor? Mm -hmm. Okay, there was yep. an oil pressure. There's an oil pressure control there that was disconnected. I don't know if that ever got reconnected, but there was an oil pressure control there. And there's definitely oil pressure controls on that big supermarket rack system, but those are pro those are digital. So, any question on this diagram? Okay. Um, again, I'm going to make these wire diagrams available, but for those of you who've been screen printing, that's fine. Okay, 12B. Okay, this is diagram 12B. Let me pull it up a little bit further in size. What can you tell me about this diagram? There is something, there's something sort of important on this. That's a no, I have a neutral on that one. I have a neutral. What about all the coils? They're all in 20. Yeah. Right. So I am actually I am actually wiring with two different circuits here. Okay. I'm going to do my line side which three of the four motors are 240 volt three phase. Then I have my control side which is 120 volts. And then I have an evaporator fan motor, which is um, 240 volts, but single phase. Or you could wire it 120 volts for all I care. It doesn't matter. You'd have to look at the motor. So, we, so here it becomes really important on the um, control side. I'm going to do the control side, and then I'm going to show you guys the wire diagram just so you can see it and we can walk through it. But the control side is sort of important. I'm going to do the, oh, let's just, I'm going to run my neutral first because, okay, but I'm going to just come down. I'm going to run my neutral so it's wired, so it's wired in. Okay, and again, depending on this motor, you could put it on the, 240 side if it's a 240, but I'm in this case I'm just gonna hate to say it, take the easy way out. Um, I it doesn't matter which pin you come off. Doesn't matter if you come off of L1, L2, L3. Okay, because either any of these to neutral is going to give you your 120. If you ever look inside a breaker panel. You have two bars on each side of the breaker panel, and then you have a neutral in the center. The two bars on either side of the breaker panel is 240 between the two. Go from one bar to the neutral, it's 120. So I'm going to come out here, and I'm just going to use L3, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to come to this coil. And actually, let's make an adjustment here. I'm going to make a, sorry guys, I'm going to make a little adjustment here. I want to get my pressure switches in. Do I wire pressure switches in um, series or parallel? Uh, series. In series. All safety. All safety devices always in series. 
Okay. And I'm just going to bring my condenser fans there as well. Okay. And then on the on the right side of the coils, I'm just going to bring them back to neutral. Now, because the condenser fan in this case, or the evaporator fan, has a relay, okay, does this evaporator fan run constantly, or does it cycle with the thermostat? Cycle. Yeah, in this case, and this is really odd for a commercial system, in this case, we're going to cycle this. Most commercial systems, the evaporator fan only runs or runs Person. until defrost, runs constantly. So, again, this is an odd situation that we cycle this evaporator fan. And I'm going to bring that. I don't want the evaporator fan to run with the pressure switches, so I'm going to bypass Let's bring that out a little bit. I'm going to bypass the pressure switches with that evaporator fan. Okay, and I could just I could just do this. Let's treat that as a 120 volt fan. And again, there's a few ways to wire this. So as long as it works when you're wiring it and it submit it, I'm fine. That's your. That's what we're calling the 120 volt side of the circuit. Okay. Now, when you, when you look at the lot, when you look at the three phase side of the circuit, it's relatively easy, right? Yeah. All you're doing is connecting all L1 to all L1s, all L2s to all L2s, and you don't have to come up here for everyone, because if you want to, if you want to connect this in. For all I care, you can come down L1, okay, then you can bounce L1 down to here, okay, because it's the same point electrically. Now, what, um, what terminal on the... Uh relay down there, do you have um, the line coming off of the relay to the evaporator fan motor? Do you have it on the two. third terminal? Sorry, two. Two. Two? Okay. It's normally open, yeah. So when the relay is energized, right. the relay closes. closes. Sorry. It energizes the fan. Yes. Okay. So basically what you're doing is you're doing this all the way down. Man, I was so close on this, bro. Were you pretty close? Yeah, I was close. It's just okay. I messed up on the relay a little bit. Okay, and you're going to do the same with, you can do the same with the L2. Let me get rid of that line I just did. Okay, you're do, going to do the same with the L2. And then L3 becomes really easy, okay, because L3, remember, we did, we used that for our 120-volt feed. So I can come out of L3, and I can basically connect all my L3s together, okay. And, again, I don't want to go through the pressure switches, so I need to take L3 back to, ah, let me use another color. Or you guys are never going to see it. I could take L3. All the way back to um, the L3 up here. Yeah, 
not the neatest drawing. I've never claimed to be an artist, but I'm hoping you guys can see that. And then what we're going to do on this side, you're just going to connect T1, T2, and T3 to where they belong. Okay, does this make sense to everybody? If you have a question, please ask me. Okay, did anybody, does anybody still need to get a screen print of it or whatever before I switch over to the wired version of this? Okay, basically that that's how it was wired. They took the neutral around the bottom a little bit. I'll pull this up in size a little. And of course they used the jumps, which I just can't draw in the way we are right now. My drawing skills aren't that great. I like the color-coded wires better. <laughs> I do too. But that was the uh, that's the official key on this one. I like my colors. So, okay, again, no oil pressure safety in this one. So this is not going to be a major large piece of equipment that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, this is going to be a relatively smaller piece of equipment. Well, not, I mean, it has two condenser fans, so it's somewhat decent size, but it's not going to be a majorly expensive piece of equipment. Okay, next one I do want to talk about, we're going to move on to 12C. What's the difference on 12C from the last one we talked about? Hmm. 240 volt? Yeah. Well, we still have, we have the 240 volt coil, so we have line voltage coil. But there's another difference here. They have the overloads. Yeah, the overloads in the middle there. We have the overloads. Oh. Okay. We only have coils on L1 and L3. Is that because that's where your control circuit is? No, this actually, believe it or not, it happens a lot because if you lose any one, this is sort of a cost-saving thing a lot of manufacturers do. Okay, okay. It's, more expen it's more expensive to do the first one, but again, it sort of works the same, because even if I lose L2, what's going to happen to the amperage on L1? Right, I see. Okay, it's it's just a cheaper approach. I personally, I don't know, maybe I'm old school, I like to have them on all three, but I see this quite a lot. Okay, so for the control circuit, Am I going to use neutral any place? Just with yeah, the evaporator. The, the relay on the evaporator fan. Yeah, just the 120. Yeah, that relay on the evaporator fan. Okay. Now I am not gonna I am not gonna draw a whole bunch of wires because I think we're gonna get lost if I start drawing wires all over the place. So let me shift over to the pre wired one and we're gonna talk this through. Okay, let me pull this up in size a little bit. Eh, too big. I know you like my colored wires better, but let's take a look at this one. Okay. Now, neutral is only going to two devices, okay? Neutral is only being used here and here. So this evaporator fan motor is 120. 
Okay, because if we trace neutral through, it's coming there, and then it's splitting off down near the bottom of my screen to the evaporator fan. So we have our 120 volt coil. We also have this 120 volt evaporator fan. Okay, and if you see pin one, it goes all the way back up to L3. Okay, it ties into L3 up here. That line goes all the way to L3, goes all the way down to pin one. Now there's other things that come off of L3. This is a junction point right here where I just highlighted. That's a junction point. Okay, so L3 is being used as one side of the 120, but it's also feeding L3 there. It's feeding L3 on the second contactor and there. And then it's also, again, powering pin one down here. So L3 in neutral is my 120. Now, L3 does something else here. You see how it's starting to go through my control circuit. Okay, L3 over here comes into my control circuit. Okay, and comes all the way down through my thermostat, pressure switch, pressure switch, and other pressure switch, and then goes to my 240 volt coils. You, everybody follow me up to that point? Any questions up to that point? I got it from L1. That's the same, right? Well, not well, not re, not really. Well, oh, when you drew it, you took it from L1. Yes. Okay. Yeah. As long as the rest of this, after I finish, after I do this, matches. Okay. Yes. You could come off L1. I don't care which one you came off of, but the key is. Once you come through the coil, for whatever you came off of, you have to loop through the normally closed of the overloads and then come back to another line. Okay, you see how they came back to line one? They came out of this first coil. Okay, they came out of this first coil here. And then they looped up. Through the normally closed of the overload. So you would came back L1 to, common side of the control circuit. Yeah, they used L1 as the common. Now, I don't care if you use two other line one or line two. It's still correct. It doesn't matter. I see. It probably just came out neater because L3 was on the bottom. Yeah, I, yeah. when you don't have multi, when it was black and white, there's really no way. It's very difficult to make these jumps. But does anybody have a question on how this control works? So again, here we're coming into the 240 coil. We're coming out of the 240 coil, coming through our overloads. So if any one of these motors loses a leg, Let's say that leg goes out. That overload here will open, and it's going to open the whole circuit so this coil becomes de-energized. That's how these overloads work. Any questions? So on this circuit, if um, L2 were to go out or um, um, like the winding would burn out or something like that, would yep. the would it continue to run? No, because if L2 burns out, my amperage on L1 and L3 is going to skyrocket, which will energize this coil and give enough amperage to create a magnetic field that will open that contact. Okay. Now, here's the key question. If this circuit opens, okay, the one I have highlighted right now, 
If that circuit opens, will everything else continue to run? I want to say yes. Yes. If that circuit, if this condenser fan shuts off, everything else is going to continue to operate until something happens. What's my next device that's going to protect this system if this condenser fan goes out on a very hot day? High pressure. Um, yeah. yeah, high pressure. That high pressure switch will open. Okay. This high pressure switch right here will open. Now, high pressure switches are normally manual reset or automatic reset. Should be automatic. I'm an automatic. No, it's manual. Low pressure is automatic. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. High pressure is actually a pretty, it's a protection device because do I want a circuit, do I want, let's say it's a refridge, do I want that to continue to come on and off at a very high pressure and cycle on and off if I don't have a condenser fan running? Okay, because there's just too much you can do to a compressor if we don't have a condenser fan running on a very hot day. On a medium temperature day, you know what? You'll walk up to that equipment to do a preventative maintenance, and you'll see a condenser fan not running. No major deal. You trace it down, and you find out why the condenser fan isn't running. But on a, on a really hot day, if that condenser fan isn't running, okay, you're going to have um, – you take a chance of damaging the compressor. And that's really what we're trying to protect all the way through here is the compressor. Now, if this evaporator fan stops running, what safety device do we have in here that might react? If an evaporator fan stops running, what's going to happen to the refrigerant pressures? It's going to it's going to go down. Yeah, it's going to go really go, low. Yeah, because we're Way not low. blowing we're not blowing that air across the evaporator, and it's eventually going to build up ice. Ice further insulates, and it doesn't allow it to absorb heat and boil off the refrigerant. So my evaporator pressure is going to seriously drop under that ice, and it's going to open my low-pressure switch, which will protect the whole system. Now, low-pressure switches, are they manual or auto-reset? They're auto. Yeah, yeah auto. Low-pressure low switches are auto-reset. Okay, so once the ice clears off and once the pressures rise, the system will come back on. And it might go for a while and then come off. Okay, this happens a lot in restaurants. Okay, restaurant walk-ins. This situation happens quite a bit, and it's not because the evaporator fan dies. Okay, it's because people have a tendency to store, I don't know, how many people here have worked in food service, but these carts that they pre-make the salads on, they have a tendency to shove those right under the evaporators, and the cellophane from the top of those carts where they throw cellophane on it gets sucked up into the evaporator. Okay, and it actually pre prevents air from moving across. It happens a lot. That's a nice $400 service call. So, okay, any questions on this diagram? Did everyone get mm -hmm. a screen print who wants to get it? Let me decrease the size a little bit so you get the whole print. Again, I will make these, I'll make these wire diagrams available so you have them. But that is 12C. Now, 13B, has a few little differences in it. What type of pressure switch is the one I just circled down there? A high-low. 
Yeah, it's a combination pressure switch. It goes both high and low. What type of capacitor do I got? Start capacitor. Right. It's a start capacitor. So is it always in the circuit, or does it come out of the circuit when the mo? Comes Actually, out of the no. In this case, it's yeah, not. It comes a out. Wait a sec, guys. In this case, um, yeah. So we have we have this. Okay. Then do I have a? I have what type of motor is that? Three phase. Yep, I have a three phase motor. You know, like you can read. What? <laughs> Nothing. Just messing, Jake. Yeah, yeah, there got to be one in every crowd. Um. Okay. <laughs> What type of timer is this? It's a defrost timer. Commercial or residential? Commercial. commercial. Yeah, it's a, it's a commercial. And you can always tell because we have our X terminal, which is the defrost termination solenoid. Okay, remember from the wiring boards, I had you guys use that double pole um, switch. You are basically simulating that right there. Okay, and that's mounted on the evaporator itself. It's defrost termination thermostat. Okay. So, how many, so, do we have any controls on here we haven't seen before? Not really. Just a matter of wiring it together. Again, I'm not going to draw a whole bunch of lines on this. Let's go ahead and look at the wired one, and we'll talk about it. I know some of you guys are getting screen prints. I'll try to fit this on the page where you can see all the lines. There we go. Okay. So L1, L2, and L3, the first connections you have to worry about is down to the contactor. Once you get that tied in, you're fine. So we're coming out of, I'm just going to trace one of these through. We come out of L1. We come down. We're coming all the way down to L1 on my contactor. Then I might as well tie in my compressor, and again, we got to go through the overload. Okay, so L1 is there. Now, they're using L1 to feed my defrost timer. Okay, you see that connection right there. Okay, so that is what we're using L1 for. Now, L2... Okay, L2, we're bringing down, again, they're tying in. I'm sorry about my lack of straight lines. As you know, difficult to do on mouse and iPads and everything else like that. Okay, L2, we're coming in and tying in my contactor and my second winding of my compressor. But then we're also using L2 for my control circuit. Okay, and if you follow L2 around, L2 is the one that loops through. For my control circuit. Follow it so far? Okay, and then, remember I said L1 is feeding the defrost timer. On my normally closed, which in this case is pin 4 of my defrost timer, that's where I'm coming down into my thermostats. To my... Um, combo pressure switch 
and down into my control, into my contactor coil. But we also are feeding my evaporator. Now, does the evaporator cycle on and off with the thermostat? Anybody? Evaporator cycle on and off with thermostat? Yeah. yeah. No, it's, no, it's before the uh, thermostat. Yeah, it's before. We're talking a commercial system. Most commercial mm. systems with defrost, the evaporator fan runs constantly unless it is in defrost. Like with the defrost, not the thermostat. Right, it cycles on defrost. Because pin four, when I go into defrost, pin four will open, okay, and pin three will close. Once pin four opens, I've shut off my condenser fan, my compressor, and my evaporator, okay, fan. Then pin three closes. Okay, and pin three, now let's, let's go to that. Pin three is my defrost, which then comes through and feeds my defrost heater. Okay. And the other side of that defrost heater just comes back to L2. What's my X terminal do? Terminates defrost. All it is is defrost termination. Now, what's really weird about the, the defrost termination thermostat, it's actually wired on what we would consider the common or neutral side. Okay, it's not wired on the, what we would consider the line side. So we're actually breaking common here. Okay, so if I, ta if I follow this through, Okay, let me just pick another color. If I come and follow this through, okay, I'm coming through here. Okay, to L2 when it's in this position. You see I'm giving my evaporator fans L2 when it's when it's in my if it's down in this position, in other words, if it's cool, if it's warm, I'm bringing it back to X. And I'm bringing X, which is neutral, or the common side, back to this solenoid. This little squiggly line in the middle of this defrost thermostat is a solenoid. So over here, what's going on? Okay, and I'm going to... Does everybody follow how I wired that? Because I need to erase some wires to go to the next thing I need to explain. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Over here... This defrost termination thermostat, okay, that we're talking about in the, in the middle of the evaporator section, this piece right there. When we go into defrost, that thermostat is initially not in the position it's in. It's cold. The evaporator fans are running. Okay, so we shut off the evaporator fans when we open, open the four. We no longer have power to the evaporator fans. Four becomes dead. We energize three, which turns on our defrost heaters. 
as the system melts ice off that coil, my thermostat will increase in temperature when it reaches usually 33 or 34 degrees. In other words, there's no more ice on it. It makes the contact and closes X. X shuts off defrost, okay, and brings the cooling back on. Now, even though defrost is shut off, my cooling is coming back on, the fans do not start. This switch is still warm. This thermostat is still showing a warm coil. Did I lose anybody yet? Okay. Once the thermos, once the refrigerant starts flowing through the system, that coil is going to cool off. Not until it's under 32 degrees will this thermostat allow these evaporator fans to come back on. What that does, again, it prevents blowing warm humid air around a freezer. Questions? Anybody? Hello? None yet. Oh, we're good. Okay. okay. Good. Just every, the only reason I keep asking like that is because I don't know if I lost you guys or if you're still there. So We good, we good. Okay. And then the system continues to run in cooling mode until the until we go back into the next defrost cycle now if you ever show up in a area where there's a deep freeze and you have um ice all over the place i mean it seriously looks like the ice cave okay there's ice on all the product and it's sort of a like a misty sort of ice like someone ran a snow machine snow making machine in there okay you have um, that all over the place. You can right away come back to the, that either my defrost clock is not turning off. Okay, in other words, someone didn't wire it properly, and it's not turning off the fans. But most likely, the problem is right here with this switch, with this thermostat. The defrost therm termination thermostat is stuck in the fan on mode. And that happens a lot. These things only have a lifespan of about five years. So those will go out. Okay? So that's how this whole system works. This is probably one of the more complex diagrams that we actually, that we actually go over because it's probably you have most of the controls in here and you have most of the sequencing. The only thing we haven't talked about in this diagram is what happens if it's hot gas. And I'm pretty sure there's another diagram that moves to hot gas. Now, defrost, does my compressor stay running or not? Not in this example, no. No, not in electric defrost. I have to shut my compressor down in electric defrost. So let me clear all my scribbles on this one. Oops, went too far. Okay. If anybody wants a screen print, I'll wait a sec here. You could take a screen print of that, but again, I'll make these available. I have one more I want to go through. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is the one that's in 13C. Okay. 13C, we add one thing, one control to this. Liquid solenoid. The liquid line solenoid. Now, 
what controls the liquid line solenoid? The guys in Brad's class, I know I went over this. What controls a liquid line solenoid? Isn't it the uh, the high low? Thermostat. The thermostat controls the liquid line solenoid. What controls the compressor? And you just said the answer. The high low. The high low controls the compressor. Because our whole goal is to pump down all the refrigerant out of the evaporator. So the compressor has to stay running to remove all that liquid refrigerant out of the evaporator. So now I have electric heat defrost, right? So does my um, compressor stay running or does it shut off in defrost? Shuts off. Shuts off. Okay, so out of pin four on my defrost. Okay, out of pin four on my defrost. Okay, we are going to feed two things. We are going to feed my thermostat, but I'm also going to come in and feed my liquid line or my high low pressure. My thermostat connects to my liquid line solenoid. Okay, my, now I'm going to do this, I'm going to take my to the 240 pin here. The wire diagram may do a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to come there and I'm going to come out of my, this is how I'm going to feed my control circuits. Okay. So again, pin four comes to my thermostat that I'm using as a junction point. My thermostat controls my liquid line solenoid, and that just can come back to another terminal. And I'm not going to draw the whole diagram, but I just want you guys to see this part of it in different colors. So I could come down here, okay, I could use my Okay, and I'm going to come to basically that point, and let me change that too. Okay, and then I'm going to feed my the rest of my control circuit by coming in and out. Remember, I have to come through my... And I did that backwards, let me just... All my safety devices have to be in series. And then I want to bring, again, I'm going to just bring, and this is going to be ugly, but, okay, I need to bring this coil back to, it really doesn't matter it can go back to L1 or L2. It, I really don't care. I'm going to bring it back to L2 just because that's what I've been using for common. Again, as I said, it's going to be ugly. Okay. I've been using L2 as common. I'm going to stick with that. Okay, and might as well throw that in there while I'm there. Okay. 
Okay, and again, T1, T2, T3, you wire straight through, bringing it down there. Okay, but on the control circuit side here, does anybody have any questions? Okay. And again, the wire diagram, because it's all black and white, um, basically does the same idea. Okay, we're again bringing off a of four, we're coming to our thermostat, they are actually bringing, rather than coming off four, they're bringing it from there, but again, my pressure switch is controlling basically everything on the bottom portion. Questions? Okay, guys, I've kept you on this call for about an hour and a half. Um, that's probably all the um, diagrams we can handle today. Does anybody have any questions on today's material or what I need you to do? We're good. I believe we're good. Okay. So very important. Today I really need you guys to take a look at those um, I need you guys to take a look at the um, lecture videos on the domestic refrigerant freezers. Okay, there's two videos there. Take a look at the, there is a homework assignment that I believe opened that needs to be done. Um, I'll let it go till Monday afternoon, but I gotta, I gotta wrap up some grading on that course by the end of the day Monday. I'm not gonna ki kill anyone on grades. Again, I'm putting in an incomplete, so you'll have a chance to get that up. Don't worry about that. But I do need to move on. So that homework assignment, please take a look at it sometime today or by Monday afternoon. We have discussion board posts. Guys, your attendance is based on the discussion board posts and being on the calls or listening to the calls later. The discussion board post, as far as I'm concerned, is the most important. Try to get to the correct place on the discussion board post. Answer my questions. Please re respond to other something than I agree or I disagree to another person in the class. I, I, there's pretty specific directions on that. Um, it's okay to say to tell somebody that, no, I don't think that's the way it works. Here's how it should work. I'm fine with that. Okay, matter of fact, it's, that's actually the purpose of the discussion board is to have that conversation. Um, work on schematic 14, and if you feel like it, take a look at 14B and 14C. Don't turn these in until after we talk about it. For those who've already turned in schematics, I will reset it so you can re so you can re-upload a new version. I'm fine on that. Um, and then we're going to. I think did everybody was this okay for everybody today, sound wise? Yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to stay on this because it, for me it's just. Yeah. What was that? Good. Okay, for me it actually works best to be on this. If you guys can hear me, I'd prefer to stay on this service. Um, and then make sure you log into this other course. Follow that link I gave you on the next course. I need you guys to be in it. And I'm working on the textbook issue right now. So please get into this course. Okay, and I'll have some directions out there on Monday probably. Okay, because that course starts on Tuesday morning. Okay, if anybody has any questions, you guys know how to reach me, email, or even if you want to text or phone, that's fine. If you get my voicemail, um, please realize there's a lot going on and I'm in and out of meetings. So you guys have a great rest of the week, rest of the day. Have a good weekend, and we will talk to you on Monday. That's all I have. Thank you. Right. Hey, I got a, I got a question. Yeah, I'm here. The homework is on to Monday afternoon, right? Yeah, Monday afternoon, just by end of day on Monday, because i got to wrap up that course. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Bye.